Hello. My name is Sandy. As I was presented, I'm a co-founding partner of uh, Modus Architects with my husband, Mateo Scagnol. And uh, I'm going to be talking about the house and studio for an artist named Hubert Costner and his family. Uh, it was finished uh, officially in August of last year, but it's um, somewhat of an open-ended project, a work in progress. And uh, the open-endedness of the project of course, it's not an objective uh, of a project. And as a general rule, uh, architects, of course, like to bring closure and, or completeness to a project. But I think it's important to better understand the project in, um, in what it seems to offer up to Hubert as a person, but uh, more particularly as an artist, and also to others that it, this house uh, uh, seems to generate uh, new ideas, new projects, and new conversations. And uh, that's been an extremely rewarding uh, thing to see as this project has kind of worn on in time. Um, the, the, story, the story of the house is a story of postcards. Uh, the first uh, up above you see is from April of 2009. It's a very crude uh, pho photo montage. Can I find it here? It's a very crude uh, photo montage of the house, but nonetheless, it's an image that conveyed the idea of this figure, this, this figure that combines two into one, the house and the studio in, in one thing inserted onto the site. So in, instead of meeting with Hu Hubert uh, formally uh, to present the project, he was already on his third or fourth architect that we had kind of heard about this, we thought to send him a postcard and uh, with his project in it. And uh, this postcard, um, uh, he received the postcard and he gave us a call. I think curiosity is an incredible power of persuasion. So, uh, and so the collaboration began. And the postcard you see below was sent some three years later towards the end of the construction. And there's something I'd like to talk about uh, very briefly about time. Uh, we saw the project just before us. It took 16 years and so forth to build. Um, and this is a small house project. And uh, this project came in uh, to us in just a few days. And, and I say that in on all honesty, uh, kind of sketches and models and drawings came in, in two or three kind of lightning days. And um, in those three years, uh, there was something very odd about it, uh, uh, trying to uh, come to grips with this project. There seemed to be uh, this, this distance between Costner, the client, and us, because there was kind of this very unwieldy, big personality, uh, inconvenient um, thing between us. And it was this house. And, and it, it took us, I think, a good three years to kind of mature uh, a, a sensibility to listening together with the client of listening to what this house uh, had to say. Um, Castel Rotto is a, is a picturesque town in the mountains in the Dolomites, South Tyrol. It's a town that thrives on tourism and the image of its uh, picturesqueness is fiercely guarded. And this is, it's important to keep in mind, um, new buildings are meant to look not too different from those existing, whereby the picture-perfect postcard image of Castel Rotto, it, it's really to be preserved at every cost. Uh, and Casarato, of course, is Hubert's hometown, and he's often um, taken this, uh, what I, I would call it, a kind of a faux authenticism or mimicry of traditional uh, images as a subject for some of his own artwork. So, um, really criticizing tourism for its flattening out of or emptying out of uh, the local culture. Uh, uh, he saw, uh, as a kind of final comment before I, I get into the project, he saw his house as um, not as your typical project of like the kind of dream house that he wanted to build, but he saw it as a kind of form of artistic rumination on what it means to engage in an act of architecture as a kind of act of cultural production. And for this, uh, he really felt that inside of him. And so he kind of saw uh, his uh, uh, making a mark, uh, building his house, as a kind of uh, resistance to his, uh, this kind of what he perceived as a lack thereof of this kind of uh, thinking about what it means, uh, what culture production might mean in his kind of working context. Um, here you see a, a photo montage, again, also very crude. Uh, here's, here's the project. Uh, uh, the photo montage that we did uh, kind of in a provocative way 
of, uh, of course, well, I should say that this project, it was actually very difficult to get, get it passed by the local administration. And uh, what we wanted to show is that perhaps it's, it's not the house that doesn't fit in when it, with its uh, context, but it's the context, it's recent context that uh, perhaps doesn't fit in with the historical uh, content of Castel Rotto, and that's what we wanted to kind of tap into. So here you see, so here you see uh, the house. Um, before we were looking from the historic city center towards the mountains. Here we're on the other side looking towards the, the historical um, uh, city center. So here you see Castel Rotto, a town of um, about 7,000. It's at an altitude of about um, just over 1,000 meters above sea level. And the thing that's important to see here is that the house is located um, just along the border uh, of the town of Castel Rotto, and it's on a steep, slide, uh, on a steep um, slope. It's on a, uh, a sloping site. Um, so with the project, this is, of, of course, a first sketch. And uh, just a very basic idea was that we were interested in uh, nego negotiating the, the horizon and uh, what it means to occupy that horizon. It's a, a subject that architects have dealt with um, from the beginning of time, so it's not a new topic. But um, uh, what happens is uh, it, in this tension between reaching for the sky and digging into the ground, uh, this ha that's exactly where the house places itself. Uh, what you see on the right is um, a sectional model, and this was an art done afterwards. We did this in also the first few days, and I think that's important to, to point out because uh, there is that double height space of the atelier that you see here. Where is that? Here it is. And that kind of cut where you have the world above that kind of touches lightly on this concrete uh, plinth that holds, that holds it within the ground and navigates that change in grade from um, the upper uh, level of the town to the lower level of the outside of town. So um, another uh, subject uh, uh, that we were thinking about in this kind of tension between the two poles is uh, an upside down nest. Um, uh, the, the spaces are very different from what's below and, and what's above. So below is all the studio space and above is is um, the domestic space of the house. And what I think is what we found uh, interesting looking at traditional structures, of course everyone uh, will re read tradition in their, through their own lens, is that um, these structures have, uh, they're generally made of stone and uh, they're very compressed and the part that, that's the base that touches the ground. And in these wooden structures then up above, they, there's a kind of uh, release of space. And that, those two different kinds of space of uh, close and, uh, and tight and, and, and small and, and kind of domestic in relationship to these more open uh, airy views were also two spatial qualities that we were looking for in the project. But we were inverting them so that in the, in the gallery space below, that's the double height space that has that kind of airy feeling. And in the house above, it, it's got those sort of uh, much more smaller scale um, uh, spaces. And those we were sketching um, on top also look, this, it was, this is just a photocopy of, a, of one of the rural um, structures that you see in, in, in the area. And we were just seeing that cut of how you negotiate from one to the other and then looking also at the construction techniques of the cross timber uh, construction. Another topic, um, um, that is dear to us just uh, is the concept of twins, of putting two things together, uh, how you do that, and, and, and this house has a lot of two-ness about it. Um, this is a, a sketch that, we, that we've done of a project that um, from our house to, uh, the, to uh, Costner's house, we see it every day. And it's a rural structure of, uh, you know, usually you have your old farmhouse and then you have the barn and the stall next to it. And they live in kind of unison, disjointed, but connected, of course, in their everyday life. Well, this one in particular is connected at the hip. And it's something, there's something very special uh, about that connection that we wanted to also tap into um, that, it, that you see here in these kind of two volumes that are, are connected at the hip. Um, here we see it, just a few of these, um, again, uh, in the first day or two of the very uh, simple studies of its form, its volume, how they come together, and, and what happens to its roofscape. 
And of course, then with that roofscape, how it negotiates that slope and gets grounded into the ground. And it has, um, in this two-ness that I talked about, it has two faces also. It has a kind of, uh, of course, a smaller scale here that you see you see up top, and then, you know, of course, uh, looking down up towards the, the slope, it has a, a more majestic scale. And, and that's something uh, that you, s well, here you see it in section where, so here's that, that uh, cut across. This is the house that Hubert grew up, uh, uh, grew up in. He's got his sister, his uh, mother, and his brother. And uh, so he's very much grounded in, in the site, and he was able to build his house next to it. And so he wanted to make sure to keep that view as you approach the, the house that he grew up in. That view across the landscape is something that he wanted to keep, and we worked very hard to, to try and keep that cut very clear. Um, so here again, you see this uh, in site. It's a kind of upside down site plan. That's the house that he grew up in. Uh, and it's kind of like this uh, grapevine uh, addition that kind of uh, swings off of it. And we are working with this line here, which is the line of um, that second ground plane that I was talking about. And, and then the building uh, participating in that roofscape uh, with adjacent buildings. So here you see that, that plinth. And the house uh, from that kind of majestic side that is in conversation with the mountains. Of course, in the South Tyrol uh, area, um, the mountains are kind of everywhere. Everywhere you are, they're there behind you. And, uh, and this is uh, a very different view, uh, that other side, very domestic. See, it's a small house. Uh, and that's also something that it's with time and, and as he's been living in it, that kind of domesticity and uh, bringing it to become his own, uh, you, you really see that in these pictures that I'm going to be showing you. So this is an earlier picture uh, image looking down into that double height space with that cut down across. Uh, you see that uh, central um, concrete uh, spiral stair that it's a kind of hinge off of which the spaces rotate. Um, there's a very clear cut um, a division between uh, what is concrete and, and, and what is wood above, and it's that uh, structural core of the stair that keeps it grounded and uh, kind of lets the spaces radiate outwards. Another view of his uh, atelier. So this is the ground, uh, the, the, let's say, underground plan where um, he'll park here. This is the double height space another uh, working space, a kind of gallery mock-up space, and his uh, wood shop, and of course the, the central concrete stair. Um, this is slowly, slowly as it becomes uh, kind of lived in, very much alive, a place of artistic production. Um, the mock-up of the gallery space, he actually wanted originally his whole gallery white. He said he wanted a neutral background. But as time went on, another uh, important thing, he just kept subtracting what, what wasn't necessary covering over, just letting things um, be as they were. There you see a detail of the concrete stair, the um, extension of the space with a mirror. There's, there's a lot of very, it's not a minimalist project. There's a lot of very little idiosyncratic moments that come out of actual conversations of walking through the space, looking here, looking there, also in dialogue with his work. That's um, on the ground floor as you enter. This is looking out into the office space on the ground floor, looking back towards the front door. There's a portico walkway all the way, so you're, you're, you're hugging that threshold between being inside the building but not being out again uh, yet in that landscape. And there's a kind of, um, you know, a tension of looking from one space through an outdoor space through another uh, indoor space. So here is um, the ground floor plan. So Here's the front door, that's the small office space, and then you go up the stairs, and here's looking down into that uh, double height gallery space, this section. It's a um, uh, uh, CLT, cross-laminated timber construction, a uh, horizontal floor system, and uh, the interior walls are CLT, the outside walls are um, cons uh, sandwich construction. Here you see a kind of a series of axonometrics where the V-timber um, structure uh, is, is um, it's pulled up into the facade, but it, it gives that, uh, tw it helps statically the, the twisting, the lateral uh, forces are held together by the um, timber structures that pull are being pulled up into the facade. 
this was a huge topic for Costner. He wanted to make sure that there was nothing decorative about, <laughs> about this project. Um, and here you see the facade is that kind of flattening of uh, structure uh, and facade. And, but what's funny is that Hubert, a lot, uh, this is an example of his work where it's, you, you know, at first glance you think mountain, but then when you look at it, you see it's a piece of wood that's just taken at a close scale, and that change of scale, and that kind of trickery, or that irony of what you think you see but you don't see, is, is something also that he was interested in and was part of our conversations. Um, and, and so he, in his kind of uh, appropriation of the, of the project, he wanted to mark it. He, wanted, he started tattooing this building, um, and he was, you know, he wanted to put his nose on it or other body parts, and, and he ended up, what did he end up doing? He just <laughs> ended up redrawing, etching into the facade the plan of the building. And, and it was his way of kind of owning, owning this project. Um, and there you see it, if you, you can just, you can, you can see it here uh, on the facade. So you go upstairs and uh, you're, you're um, confronted with a very warm uh, domestic scale, small scale environment. Um, all of the furniture and pieces were um, done in tandem with him and they all have their own personality. The way you open doors uh, of cabinetry, um, the kind of stretching of, of fabric behind uh, the bed that looks as though it's going behind the connection piece, the iron connection, the mm, metal connection pieces between the the wall, the kitchen, and the two bedrooms that when you rise up in, in, into the second floor, they're not connected. And there's that kind of refuge quality of those um, bedrooms in the top floor where you're kind of connected uh, to a world that has nothing to do with what's below. So th these are just some details of some of the, um, the front ho um, handle of the door the railing of the stair. And I'd be done now unless, uh, I do have a one minute video if there's time for it. Is there time for it? Okay, let's go um, with the video and I'm just gonna let the sound roll. I'm not gonna be uh, talking over it. <laughs> 